Hi, I'm Julie Poth, K-5 Science Supervisor for Pinellas County Schools. Coming up on this edition of Science Rocks, we will be walking and hiking with fourth grade students from Pinellas Central Elementary who will be exploring, observing, and collecting data as we tromp through the swamp. Plus, Laura Spence will be taking us to the USF Engineering Expo where students will be learning more about STEM. Science Rocks is next. Welcome to Science Rocks. My name is Julie Poth and I am the K-5 Science Supervisor for Pinellas County Schools. Today we are here at Sawgrass Lake Park in beautiful St. Petersburg. Fourth grade students will be taking some swamp tromps through Sawgrass Lake Park. They will be making observations, they will be exploring, and they will be collecting data using some tools of science. All right, I want to welcome you guys to Sawgrass Lake Park. And we're going to go into a little room and put our things down and then we're going to get started on our day, okay? So when, this, when the students arrive, what's the first things that happen? Uh, we put our things up and then we go in the classroom and I, take them a pre I give them a pretest, um, 12 questions, and I tell them that um, they're going to learn all those answers throughout the day so that they should listen for the, that material. And... Um, then I explain what our labs are when we're doing our water quality testing, and then we head outside and start on those. Hey, can you tell us what we're going to see today? Well, each day's different. Um, as I tell the kids, the animals aren't in cages. This is their natural habitat. Um, but this morning so far, I've heard pellated woodpeckers. Um, we have a great horned owl's nest up here near the educational center. And um, we're going to do some water quality testing, and we usually see a lot of wading birds down that way. Um, the kids are always anxious to see alligators, and when the sun's out, um, they're generally out too. Across the canal is a bird, and we are going to get a little bit closer as long as we're quiet. You're going to set down your kit, get out your bird field guide, see if you and your team can figure out what it is, or see if you can even just get close, and then we'll talk about it. Are you going to look on the water side, because you have long legs? Look at all the little details. It's gray color, it's not black. It's gray color. Mm -hmm. Yellow legs, great observation. Look at the shape of that bill. All right, I want you to look on the page. Look on the page that has the pink bird. You see the pink bird, the spoon bill? Look under the spoon bill. There's two herons. There's a little blue heron and a great blue heron. You see them? Now, where did he go? Did he fly away? Yeah. He is? That's pretty good camouflage because I can't even find him. You still see him? Oh my gosh, what a great camouflage, right? Do you see him? Yes. The dirt behind him, you can hardly see him. Now, look at the little blue heron on your field guide. You see him? Yes. He looks a lot like that, but he has white on his belly. This bird that's across the canal isn't on here, but he is a heron. But he's called a, are you looking at me? He's called a tri-colored heron. I want you to listen to that word and raise your hand if you can figure out why he would be called a tri-colored heron. Why? Because he has three colors. What's the prefix tri mean? Three. Um, throughout the experiments, it's a lot of um, the children are discovering on their own the quality of the water. Um, so it's following the scientific method throughout the day. Um, well, the program is funded. Um, I am a Pinellas County school teacher. I taught um, fourth grade. I've been in the county for 21 years. And um, it's also funded in part by Swift Mud. And so we mentioned Swift Mud throughout the program. And uh, we're collecting data because we need to let Swift Mud know if the water's not good quality because they know it's going to filter down to the aquifer and that's going to be their college drinking water one day. So. That's our goal today, is to see how their college drinking water looks. So this is fine for your dissolved oxygen test. Dissolved oxygen team, take your sample cup, hold it under the water to fill it with water, and then bring it up. Then go over to the picnic tables and do your experiment. Okay, guys, it looks like you're doing some testing here. Can someone tell me what you are testing? Oxygen. oxygen. We're testing oxygen. oxygen. 
Dissolved, dissolved oxygen. What? Why are you testing dissolved oxygen? To see if the full oxygen in the water for the fish. Oxygen, or if the water has enough oxygen or not. Okay, how are you doing the testing? Can you help me understand? How do you test for dissolved oxygen? Well, we don't. We're gonna put the tube. We're gonna put this in the water. So when we, so there's no oxygen getting taken up from the air. So when we can put it, we can put it in a little tube and then put a tab in, and then we're going to write down our observation. Show them how high the rain gauge was today. It was really high, wasn't it? Pull your tube out. It was 25. Show them how full it was. It was, we were counting by twos all the way up to there, so it got right there, so that would be 25. So what were you trying to find out with this big long tube? What's that for? It's to see um, how, um, how much water it takes until we can't see the bottom. And why is that important? The plants to grow, they need the sun, so if you don't have any of the sun, the plants can't grow and the plants clean the water. Okay, so you're looking to see if it's clear enough for the um, sun to penetrate the water so the plants can grow? Very cool. Because I could, I could see how the, how the um, legs positions are and how the, and how the tail, and how the tail is, how it, how it looks from what the What position the, do you see anything on this picture that you don't see on the real animal? Well, on the real animal, I really don't see. I don't see those. What are the characteristics on that di because diving beetle it has, that it makes has, like, you think? It has six legs. It, ha it has the body shape. Yeah, and two it tails, has those two tails, and, and it has those li little pincers. Yeah. yeah, little two pincers. So, which? What is your final answer? Um, the so, prejudice uh, diving beetle. Larva. The predaceous diving beetle larva. They were very excited to come out here. They were very excited to have some hands-on experiences learning some of the things that we have discussed before in class. Um, they were preparing their name tags and picking up their animals and, and talking about whether or not they were going to see them on the field trip today. How do you feel that this field trip will support what's happening back in the classroom and um, thinking about the FCAT test coming up helps supporting student success on the FCAT? I think especially when it um, we're thinking about fifth graders taking the FCAT in fifth grade, they um, have to take the science portion of the FCAT, and I think that this experience for them and being able to have the hands-on experience with the things that we've learned, especially in fourth grade, it really connects. I think they're going to be able to retain that information because they were able to experience it as opposed to just you know learn it and and read about it in class. They were actually able to you know come out here and experience it firsthand. Let's face this way. See if you can figure it. There's two birds over here. There's one in the water with a little red face, yeah, yeah. and That's there's one across the water. Don't. Can you use your field guides and figure out what they are? Yes. Look at those big, pretty um, feathers that come off the back of them. Do you know that at one time we shot so many of these birds that they were endangered? Come down here and look where I'm pointing. Oh my gosh! Stay real quiet, otherwise he's gonna go under. Stay real quiet. Oh, his mom's probably around here somewhere. She is What do you think of that? I think it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. You'll see there's some yellow stripes on him. When alligators are born, they're black, but they have yellow stripes, and those stripes start to fade as they get a little bit older. That guy's probably less than three years old. You see those stripes there on his tail? So can you explain how this field trip sparks student interest and filled their passion so that maybe as they continue to go through their educational experience that they say, hey, science is really cool and maybe I want to go into a STEM field or career? You know, it's funny that a lot of kids that arrive while we're walking through the woods, they say, do you live here? I want to live here too. And um, they don't realize this is actually my job. They just think I'm having so much fun and this is what I get to do. And so then I get to, the opportunity to um, tell them that this is science and this is something that they could do as well. Um, many times kids these days don't have the opportunity to get out into the woods and um, experience a lot of things that they see when they're here. And um, some of the children have never really even been in the woods and they're frightened. Uh, when we start first go back into the darker parts of the woods. So it gives them an opportunity to do something that they don't generally get to do. And um, when they realize that they've been doing science all day long, they're really excited. What a wonderful opportunity for these fourth grade students to participate in real world investigations and make those connections to the fourth grade standards. 
When Science Rocks continues, Laura Spence will take you to the USF Engineering Expo, where students are learning about STEM. Science Rocks rolls on in a moment.